If you're a paranoid person like myself and don't like surprises at the end, I like to know right up front what I'm walking into. We can plug the Zen A to B into this right now and we will have a fully functioning preamp output. We can test everything. We can make sure that all the channels are doing what they're supposed to do. We have some form of RCA that will read electrical signal, which we do. Plug it in and see what that looks like. Today's show is brought to you by Audio Control, making good sound great. With a full line of integration devices, signal processors, and amplifiers, they have something for every install. All their amplifiers come with their popular high level to low level section, from the basic amp to the most advanced. Their D-series amplifiers also come with their DSP processors built into them, making your installation even easier. So make sure to head over to audiocontrol.com and we'd like to thank them for being a sponsor of the show. For the install we're doing in this car, we're going with an external DSP that has four channels of input, front and rear. It creates a sixth channel subwoofer output. And seeing how this has so many outputs, I'm going to put some shrink wrap over the RCAs that we're going to be using for this. One is left front, which in our world is white. Two, which will be gray. Rear is seven and eight. Eight I've found, which is right rear door. That's Purple. Seven is going to be green. Now, in case you're wondering what these colors are, these are the standard wire colors for these corners of the car. If you've ever put in a radio before, they use these standard colors. If you've ever seen a factory wiring harness adapter, they use these standard colors. And it just makes it easy. We can look at these quickly in a glance. Let's get over in the car and plug this in. Plug in the USB blue connector first, the big gray speaker harness, the smaller black main power harness. As soon as you do that, you'll start to see blue and red lights flashing away, which is what we want to see. That's good. It means it's communicating, it's reading the system, and then it goes orange. And then orange is actually more of a yellow. According to the instructions, that's that green red or yellow, which means normal operations. I'm gonna turn the key on, turn the radio up. We'll have no sound, but it'll put voltage into the RCAs which is what we're looking for. Playing pink noise in the system, we see that nice flat output. That is exactly what we wanna see. This is what's coming out of the driver's front speaker. We check the volume control by having Fernando turn it up and down. It goes down, it goes back up. We also wanna check to make sure that the blinky light is working here. As you can see, it changes colors. That means it's properly receiving the signal. I'm gonna switch over to a rear RCA and the passenger rear door is working. That's telling us our signal is working exactly how we want it to. We have front, we have rear, it's going where it needs to. It's ruler flat, perfect for tuning. We don't have to fight any of those signals coming out of the amplifier. And that nice flat line, this one right here, you want to have the best signal possible going into your amplifiers or your DSP, and this will give it to you. Think of it like this, and this is what I always tell people. You're going to have to buy some form of a radio. Everyone automatically assumes just because they have a radio in their dash that that part of the expense is out of the equation. It's not. You're still going to have to do it, just you're going to have to do it with interfacing. This interface costs about as much is an aftermarket radio. But what it's doing is it's turning your factory, gorgeous looking, this whole yay, whether it be a Ford or something else, into an aftermarket radio. The whole reason why you go with an aftermarket radio is so you could get that nice ruler flat output in the preamp section, that awesome preamp section. We've just done that now in our factory radio. It's kind of like the holy grail of what we've been wanting to do for years and years and years now. This and boxes just like that now does it for us. It's super exciting, get excited people. The last thing we want to test is the remote turn on. We want to make sure that that works and it has 12 volts of output. Like we said, this automatically wakes up as soon as you do things in the car. So what that means, we don't necessarily need to turn the car on to see if it's putting out the voltage. Blue wire goes to red, black wire goes to ground. This is what we want to see. This is what's going to turn on our amplifiers. Now the fun part starts. We've done all the testing. We've seen how it works. It's going to be no surprises what I like. It's time to figure out that harness and where all those wires are going to go. Before we do that, I am going to check to see if I have the pack harness. If I don't, well then we'll solder all those things on. Pack audio APH FDO2. We have it in stock. It's the same harness. It lines up. It has a female and male end. If we wanted to, we could plug this in like this. 
plug this into the factory and be done with it. However, these are the data wires right here. We could actually remove this whole harness altogether and just solder this one into place. Probably what I'm gonna do. But before we do any of that, I'm gonna take this into the car, plug it in, and tone all these speakers to make sure that there's speakers on the other end of these wires. Starting with our green pair. Yes, there's a gray pair. It's two for two. Drivers. Passenger rear. So the purple, the green, the gray, and the white go exactly where we need them to go. There's also three other ones here, a red, a blue, and a brown. The brown should be center, which isn't in the car, so it's not gonna make any noise. The red is subwoofer two, and the blue is subwoofer one, which all three of these speakers are not in the car. We don't need them. We're not gonna be retaining them. Yes, this harness will work for what we wanna do. Removing the female end that would plug into this plug it into place. There's a pink and a pink black. The pink is going to this white wire and the pink black is going to the purple wire. I'm going to solder those on. But before I do that, the extra wires, the blue, brown, and red, we're not gonna be using. And I wanna remove those off of the harness. There we go. The shrink wrap off, these are the pins I was talking about. So if you're good at soldering, you could definitely solder on. The last thing, the last thing I'm doing to this harness, now that we've got it all straightened out, is adding a layer of tape, just like the factory. Our Zen is prepped. We have our speaker wires, remote turn on, RCAs. This is ready to get into the car. Next step is getting this connected to the amplifiers. For this install, we're gonna be using the Audio Control D4.800 DSP four channel amplifier with an output to go to the LC 1.800 amplifier. That's why we're only using four channel output on the Zen A to B. They're gonna feed into here and then there's an output that comes over to this. But instead of talking about it, let's unbox these and we'll take a look at it. Let's start with the D4.800. You'll find the check-in sheet, the owner's manual, the amplifier itself, the cable to program it, and an Allen key. The Allen key is to get the top off of the amplifier, which I like to do right away and put back in the box before I move forward. There's two screws located here at the front. Loosen those all the way up. Give it a little pop towards the bottom and it'll come right off. The D4.800. This amplifier is one of the most universal amplifiers on the market today. Let me explain why. First off, it has 80 amps of current draw. It has a four gauge input for both power and ground, remote turn on. Remote turn on though, can be done multiple ways. 12 volt turn on from something like the Zen A to B. If you look on the top of the amplifier, you have a switch here that says GTO signal sense on and off. This allows you to use the inputs here to turn on the amplifier via DC offset. We're not gonna be using that so we want to make sure that our switch is in the off position rca inputs front rca inputs rear and then line out this is the output that goes off to the sub amplifier which is programmable through the software on the amplifier to use the software the blue cable provided plugs into this usb input right here next to it you'll see the option port this can be used for a couple different things the bluetooth dongle or the future idata interface for it that way this can plug directly into an ar plug directly into any idata interface installation and do similar things that this Zen is doing. These three connectors here, that's right, three connectors here are your high level input. Why would there be three? You have front, you have rear, but then you have front high input. The reason for this is depending on the installation, you may have a car with an amplifier like this one that there's no form of integration on it whatsoever. It's got a tweeter output, it's got a front mid-range output, and it has a rear. This allows you to use this amplifier's internal high level to low level adapter with six channels of input and you can sum the front high inputs with the front inputs in the software. Think of it as their LC7i built into a four channel amplifier. One of very few amplifiers that have internal summing capability built into it. To control the level of the front high input, it is done through the software. The other nice thing is if you bought just the LC and not the D version, it has those same high level features also. There would be a gain control here that allows you to do your summing mix on the top along with your other gain control. Located over here next to the USB is your ACR3 volume control. The ACR3 is going to control this output here if you would like and also allow you to toggle through the presets. Those presets can also be controlled here if you buy the Bluetooth dongle. It has your stereo outputs for 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 located here. It'll do down to 2 ohm stereo and 4 ohm mono. We're going to be using 4 ohm stereo. Some of the specifications on the amplifier 125 watts by 4 at 4 ohms. If you decide to run it at two 
ohms times four, you will go up to 200 watts. If you'd like to bridge it into a two channel or three channel mode, you can get 400 watts at four ohms out of the combined channels. Input wise, if you're gonna be using it as low level, it'll take 500 millivolts all the way up to six volts. For high level input, you have three volts to 40 volts. Frequency response in the amplifier is 10 hertz to 24,000. Total harmonic distortion is less than 0.01%. For a full list of all the specifications on the amplifier, make sure to head over to audiocontrol.com where you can check them all out there. Next, let's take a look at the subamp, the LC 1.800. Owner's manual, Allen key. Just like the high amp, take off the cover. The LC 1.800, a spectacular sub amplifier. A couple features on the top to note, it has the GTO signal sense input, make sure it's off. It has AccuBase. All of the audio control amplifiers are designed to go in multiple ways, via RCA inputs or line level inputs. If you're putting this into a system with a factory radio, it may have a feature called bass roll off. Bass roll off is where, as you're turning it up, you'll notice the subwoofer doesn't get any louder, but your mids and highs continue too. With AccuBase, it's a feature put into the amplifier to help alleviate that. It also will work as a bass boost too, depending on your needs. Your crossover, low pass between 30 and 230 hertz. Your gain control, 180 degrees phase switch. It has what they call the MILC source clip input light, as well as your gain maximized. When these things start flickering, that's telling you you gotta start turning things down. If your source light comes on, that's telling you that your source unit is starting to distort, turn it down. If your gain maximized light starts coming on, that's telling your gain is up too high. The D4.800 has those also. Maximized input as well as maximized output. Your source level clip light is located here. On the end of the amplifier, you have your 80 amps of fusing, four gauge input for both power and ground, remote turn on, your high level input, your line level input, has up to an eight gauge output for your subwoofer. It is a positive and negative output that will play down to two ohms, as indicated right here. And it has an input for the ACR1 remote level controller. Some specifications on the amplifier. It's 500 watts at four ohms, 800 watts at two ohms. It has the same maximum input voltage on the low level at 500 millivolts up to six volts and three to 40 volts of input on the high level. Total harmonic distortion is less than 0.01%. When I'm using both of these amplifiers in this configuration, I like to call it my five channel amplifier. I come out of this RCA here and come into this RCA here. I don't like to use the ACR3 subwoofer volume control. I like the ACR1. It's just a straight volume knob. It has a stopping point and it has a starting point. It's not an infinite spin. The ACR3 spins and spins and spins, but that's my personal preference. It's up to you to decide which ones you like.